everyone. Here we are, uh, Paul Graham and I, Mark Beasley, one of the curatorial directors at Ace Gallery. And we are here at the reopen exhibition of Paul's work for the seasons. Um, there you go, the clue is in. Um, and it's six large scale works of photographs made in homage to Bruegel's uh, painted series of iconic works of 1565 that depicted rural life in Northern Europe. There was also a second series of works uh, called Cyclas in a room to the right of us that we'll get to in good time. Um, that series of works is I understand it were made almost 15 years ago on 42nd Street and it's a series of portraits of people in, in a kind of reverie, their eyes are closed and they're walking through 42nd Street. But before we get to that, I wanted to give a quick introduction to Paul. Um, and just to announce, we're two British guys, so if it gets confusing with accents, um, just look for the faces more animated, perhaps. Um, Paul is a British photographer based in the US, um, specifically New York, I guess, as am I. And his first exhibition was at the Watershed in Bristol, in UK, um, in 1986, which led to a series of rewards, or awards, as we'd like to say, um, amongst which were the GLC Publications Award, the Arts Council Publication Award, the Young Photographers Award, and chiefly the Royal Photographic Society Award, um, amongst others. In 2012, the Hasselblad Foundation awarded him the International Photography Award, which I believe was the first time a, a Brit had been awarded that. Um, so kudos for that. The author of 12 books and survey monographs over the years, Paul has participated in many gallery exhibitions around the world and is held um, in collections largely permanently in the Tate Gallery in London, the Met here in New York, and the Arts Council back in the UK. To the present, um, specifically an exhibition titled that in 2012, where he first displayed or exhibited with Pace, Pace slash McGill, um, two exhibitions, first the present in 2012, and then Does Yellow, Yellow Run Forever, a series of works taken between 2011 and 2014. Um, most will remember, as do I, I, I came to New York first in 2006, and the chief exhibition of Paul's work that I remember was staged at MoMA called Shimmer, um, it's somewhat reproduced, if that's the right word, in 12 volumes. And it's Paul's, I guess, research or exploration of America as he found it over many months and over many years. Um, that exhibition, I think, was staged uh, and works themselves were taken between 2004 and 2006. Um, through the power of technology and IGTV, um, I'm going to move behind the camera and we're going to look at some images. At first, images from the series Shimmer and Moma. Shimmer of Possibility. Shimmer of Possibility, a pretty small title. And then two of the exhibits from Pace. Um, and then we'll, then we'll get to look at the seasons, how Paul's differed from Bruegel's or how they somehow encapsulated the same kind of quality. Um, I look at Paul. Welcome. All right. So here, Paul, we're looking at um, an installation shot from MoMA of the Shimmer of Possibility. And maybe, what led you to this series? Um, when did you move to the States? What were your thoughts around that time? What was it you were looking for in, the, in this series of work, the right. photographs? Thank you, Mark. Hi, everybody. Hard. I am speaking under this mask. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I was visiting America a lot for the, in, from the 80s and 90s, and I would say I finally started to half living here, 98, 99, 2000, uh, and then 
full time from about 2002. Um, yeah, so the first series I did was um, uh, I did three, three um, overexposed landscapes about the invisibility of the poor and the dispossessed in the United States, which was shown at uh, uh, PS21. And then I started traveling um, around the States again. I mean, one of the things is, you know, Mark, when you, when you move somewhere, you're unencumbered. You don't have all the crap that we build up in our lives. You become a bit like a, a, a sort of Zen lifestyle and you can, um, you can move house in, a, in, a, in one go in the back of it. I could move in a taxi cab here, which was phenomenal. Then. Um, and so, uh, you know, that window of freedom, when you have no household to speak of, is a great opportunity. So I started traveling around the States, going to random places, no, no, no big shakes where I was going to. It wasn't like doing this giant uh, Kerouac type road trip. I just was going to random suburbs and cities and seeing bits in the States. And Shimmer was about that, experiencing that about everyday life in America, meeting people, nothing spectacular happening, but how that is 99% of our lives. And the flow of time through that, that was unusual about Shimmer was it used multiple images of the same situation, a guy cutting the grass or someone going shopping or uh, as a man sat waiting for a bus, you know, very, very important humdrum scenes. And um, but talking about how the, the, you know, the beauty of the flow of life and time there, hence the title, A Shimmer of Possibility, you know, that um, life, life glows with possibility, with potential. And as you say, that was published as a 12-volume book. Uh, you, you got the 12 bo bo books in one box, and shown at MoMA in 2006, was it? Yep. 2006, so a good while ago now, 14 yep. years. One of the chief images within it that I keep coming back to was this hand clutching this like foam coffee cup. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the styrofoam cup. Styrofoam cup, yeah, yeah. which is this incredible yeah. image of this kind of how we take sustenance or what, you know, what, what is comfort within those yeah. kind of seemingly yeah. austere landscapes sometimes. Yeah. And, I, I, and I kept wondering what your relationship to those people as you move through, it felt like there was a casualness and an empathy to it. Mm -hmm that was present within the images, and I immediately read it as that, that it wasn't this kind of removed, alienated obs observation that you were in it. As you say, unencumbered with the history and yeah. knowledge of America per se. Um, and the randomness of meeting people, that's right, what it's like. Right. When you are, yeah. you know, without the motivation to be something, you know, I wasn't working in any normal sense there live in these places yeah you wander around you meet people you make conversations at the bus stop yeah you spend five minutes with some some people you don't talk to some you do some you have a long conversation with and get little insights into who they are and how they live and that was reflected i feel in the work that's what yeah. i think you were you were yeah. touching upon there yeah. uh saying that the guy you know i talked to the guy who was holding that styrofoam cup he's actually was just getting ice from the ice machine in the in the local gas station okay um, he's getting a big cup of ice. It does. People keep thinking he was a panhandler, yeah, right. uh, um, asking for money, but it was simply a, a getting a big cup of ice. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's beautiful. You know, rolling with chance encounter with life flowing at you, with the weather, with the people, the cars going across the road. Ro rolling with that, and embracing it, was the, the main point of Shimmer. I like that. There was something you said in an incredible piece of writing. I think it's titled The Unreasonable Apple. And you presented it at a photography forum at the moment, I think in 2010. But what you had to say about the way you make images or think about images, that they're not random observations or lucky moments. You're not a photojournalist or a documentarian. There is something else that happens within your relationship between sight an image and the ultimate um, statement. And I wonder, this is a huge question for a photographer, and we'll get to it a little bit within these images, but are there one or two things that you're primarily looking for within the image that then settles within you and you know you have something? In the, in the case of the styrofoam cup, 
as a kind of vessel to describe a person or a portrait? Is there something within it? Um, you're, you seem to be hinting at some sort of preconception that there's something you are looking for and you try and find it. And right. That isn't always the case. Okay. You know, very, in, my, in my working, uh, you know, working, where working it isn't. Um, yeah. You know that. I mean, but that is what is beautiful about the type of photography: how you roll with life. You know, uh, yeah. you, you can go out. Of course, you can go out with wonderful preconceptions of what you want to do, and try and force the world into illustrating your your concept or your your, your idea. But the world doesn't cooperate with us, as we all no. as we all found out this year very yes. much. Yeah. Um, the world has its own agenda, yeah. and um, you have to learn to roll with that. So instead of it being simply what the artist wanted and stuck to their own little didactic concept. It's this dance between you and and life. And that is what's wonderful and unique about it in that way, you know? I mean you 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 have this dance with time and the world. And it's it's beautiful when it works in that way. Yeah. Let's move forward a little bit to the which felt like a very different series titled The Present. Which of course talking about past year, present. Yes, yes. The flash show for the present in 2012. Um, and there were many images, as I understand it, taken from the same vantage point, but the composition and the people within it dramatically changed. The image moving. And I wondered what, from that series, the shimmer possibility to this other series, it's very real, focused, I believe. What was the shift? What, what were you observing in the kind of not knowingness of image taking? What was it perhaps that you were maybe hoping for within that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Maybe uh, perhaps here we have images from that series. That yeah, well, the present, yes, it was my first show with, it was my first show with Pace and uh, with, the gallery, with the gallery. And it was all done on the streets of New York City. So, you know, which is a, a real picture street photography, you know, it's about the flow of life in a big metro, metropolitan metropolis city, uh, Gotham, people call New York Gotham, yeah. and um, it was a homage to that in a way, also a sort of reinterpretation of it, and connecting often shimmer with these stuttering moments of time in, in the present, often showed simply two moments, you know, like, like the way life flows on the street, you know, you see someone, Someone will be the main character right in front of you, and then two seconds later they have walked off and they're replaced by another one. It was like watching a piece of Shakespearean theatre, you know, on the stage who would come, who was a main character, someone would arrive from the wings suddenly as you've been in the shadows. And this endless flow of life was, um, was, uh, was very mesmerizing in that way. Um, and, you know, there was tragedy, there was comedy, just like, just like a Shakespearean play. Uh, there was there was humour sometimes, uh, ridiculous coincidence, um, and you know um, my position changed very slightly. The focus changed slightly in the pictures, but essentially it was you know uh, also about this flow of life, you know, and everything, but in, in one place in one city rather than across America. Yeah, yeah. Right. Which I think leads us neatly into the series here, the seasons. And Particularly, again, with these two works, Cyphers and the Seasons, they're looking at very particular streets, you know, 42nd Street, but here we are, Park Avenue. Yeah, um, which is where the main bank reports are. Okay. People seem to think that's Wall Street. Right. Sure. Well, as I did. Yeah. And obviously, Wall Street's where the stock exchange yeah. is, but uh, uh, the market is, but the, the, the main bank headquarters, big public banks, Bank of America, Citibank, Chase yeah. are all on this other bit of park happening. And was this post 2008 or around that time when you just got oh, I, still, I started tinkering with the idea then, but yeah. uh, you know, got much more serious about it uh, in the last four years. Like that. Um, just working, you know, and, and seeing the lunch times, especially there, where people flood out to get all the office staff and workers, you know. Um, and you would see this whole, uh, you know, this whole cast of people, of, 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 of 
workers, public, executives, to food delivery guys, flight messengers, coming and going, and it's this wonderful spread of uh, life, you know, presented right before you, as mess, right? with this backdrop of being finance, right. you know, the new, you know, American finance. Schwab's and the Chase Bank. Schwab, yeah. Schwab, J.P. Morgan Chase, that's uh, Wells Fargo, uh, another Chase one, so they're big, 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 So in that first, the, the work that you're looking at, or this is made in homage, in relation to the Bruegel painting, they were largely of peasant life in Flanders in, is it, 16th century? And here we have this shift of displacement and we have 21st century finance here in New York. Um, maybe the key thing, and when I first saw this exhibition, I'm thinking, why are the six images in a series called The Seasons? But as I understand it through you, at that point, even time itself was somehow the worst six seasons. So there's something between. Well, bro, bro, it, then bro, Broivel's paint seasons is, they believe that one of them is lost. They believe okay, there were right. six of them. Okay. Five, five exist still. Yeah. Yeah, five you can see in various museums. Yeah. They're spread about. Um, I think three are in Austria, uh, Vienna, but the others are ones in the Met. Um, they believe there were six um, because they, the, the seasons then were treated as paired months. That's I think it said January, February okay. was one month, March, April was another, right. uh, sorry, one season. Yes. March, April was another season. May, June was another season. So they have these pairs of seasons. That, that's what they believe. I mean, right. No one knows for sure. Okay. That's what people are, are, are believing happened. Uh, either that or there was 12 seasons and they've lost seven of them. But, uh, right. but people, the, the, the dominant interpretation is six seasons. So I, I'm meaning that. I did, I did my own six, you know, early, early spring with the, the rain clouds, you know, umbrellas out, the rainstorm. Yeah. Uh, on 50th, this one's 50th Street, Schwab. Uh, brokerage firm, uh, one of the main brokerage firms. So, I mean, the key thing to say here is these are, these are unposed, unstaged pictures yeah. across in the, streets of, in the streets of New York City, or contemporary New York, uh, on Park Avenue. Um, so everyone here is just going about their life. Uh, no, no one dominates the picture. There's this very sort of democratic spread of activity and life uh, moving around from delivery guys to people getting their lunch, you know, uh, drivers, truck drivers delivering. Um, so it's it's a it's a spread, a, 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 a broad range of people that you can look around the picture, um, and they're done very simply. It's a it's a it's the most classic type of trophy. It's a handheld camera, right. one exposure. Okay. It's not Photoshop. Right. No one's acting. No one's paid anyone to be in the picture yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, to, to stand in certain position or anything, and no lighting. It's whatever is natural, um, and it's just a frozen moment of life there. Um, so this one uh, in royal season, this is considered early spring. Uh, it was. I, mean, I, had, I didn't start out this idea of doing royal season. It's, it's something that came as I started working. And, yeah, there's something here. This is interesting. And then it reminded me, I suddenly realized there was a connection to these sort of, you know, landscape paintings and how interesting it was to flip from them being about an agrarian farming economy, harvesting, planting, hunting in winter, and how that flips to the economy now, which is finance. So it was flipping rural Flanders, rural Northern Europe, the economy of hunters, gatherers, and so on, right. to, to clients. Yeah. And I, as I understand it, for this one image of our six, you're shooting, I don't know whether you want to reveal this or not, but you're shooting, right. shooting thousands of images to find this one image. Yeah. And is that, you're looking at each of the figures in relation to that broader architecture of the building to the space, mm -hmm. which, and you're looking to, you know, as is different with the other series, where people with their eyes closed. And here they're all kind of attentive, they're in their body, they're kind of, if not performing, then you see a lightness within them. Mm -hmm. um, 
And maybe let's move on to this image, which for me is perhaps the most iconic. Here we have the flag, we have spring, we have... Activity, this kind of almost termite activity of people crowned by these kind of um, classic neo formal minimal architecture. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. I, <laughs> unbelievably, they, they demolished that tower. They did since I've done it. Yeah, in the last right. two years. So they're, oh, they're, they're renovating it. With renovating it meaning doesn't look like that anymore. They're in the process. Yeah, they took that down. Um, but yes, uh, absolutely, what's going on? Uh, you know, I mean, to answer your question just before about why this, you know, why this picture and not the one after it, well, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, an artistic decision that, right. Right, just like painters, dancers, why, why this move now and not, why this move with your left arm and not with your right arm, why, why is that this shade of blue is correct and that one isn't, at yeah. the end of the day it's an artistic decision connecting the people and what they look like and what's going on and uh, and just as an instinct, you know, instinctive that this is right, this is how I want. And yes, it takes what looks like the most throwaway of moments, yeah. actually to weeks if not months to, to get that feeling and that moment correct, something that you knew you wanted was right for you. And you don't want, you know, I don't, I didn't want, if there was someone, you know, someone strange with bright blue punky hair that was crossing the road and was, you know, leering at the camera, that ruins it. That's not what yeah. I want, because then the picture becomes about them and them alone. It has to be a democracy of activity across the frame, um, which intrigued me. Yes. It is interesting that that kind of subject-object relations, in that sense, there is no clear champion of the image almost mm. they're all they're all on a level playing field almost yeah. yeah even if the economy that we're looking at isn't a level playing field but maybe there's something about that were you as you were there and you were shooting this over a matter of months or years or a uh, couple of years couple of yeah. years mostly in the summer you know through the season through the season you know and yeah and you'd be there at lunchtime and would you pick certain vantage points and keep returning to those? Or you yeah. turn up on any one day? Park, Park Avenue is very good. It has a median in the middle, a raised median with gardens, so you like could stand in that median quite yeah. safely. It looks like I'm standing in the road or not. Right. So it was good for that. I mean, this building, which is Wells Fargo, 280 Park Avenue, uh, Wells Fargo being West Coast Bank, I believe it is, San Francisco yeah, based mostly. Um, yeah. Uh, I photographed it quite a lot, and then I, you know, just finally, I probably photographed it 30 times, trying to get the right balance of people. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, to my mind, I arrived there. Because remember, there's a provocation here, you know. Yeah. I, am, I am paying homage to Bruegel's iconic, some of the most famous paintings in the world, yes. you know. The harvesters, the, the, you know, the hunt in Hunters in the Snow, um, you know, uh, Return of the Herd, those, those ones. People, even if they don't know the names, they know those pictures. Yep. And I'm homaging them just with what appears to be a kind of snapshot looking across the street with photography. So I'm saying something that is a, a laboured painting where every single brushstroke has been decided by the artist. I'm referencing it in terms of a grand moment, a fleeting moment of life that I have not changed any. Yeah. And that is a provocation, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a, or it's a, it's an, an, and I'm doing that in terms of like, hey, let's expand our notions of what viewing life can be, you know, how you can view life. That something as as fortuitous and coincident like as a, a snapshot across the street can be as revealing about life and how it flows and what 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 uh, what it amounts to today. So yeah, yeah. People on their phones, of course, this is, you know, this is 
the 21st century, everyone's, everyone's uh, making phone calls, going to work, waiting, getting lunches, take out lunches. I love the colors in this one, like the oranges and the purples and the yellows and the blacks, pink. Uh, very nice. So it's, it's a determined thought on your part that there isn't any post-production that it's captured within the body of the camera. Yeah. And, and that's it. it. That's, that's, it certainly isn't, and you've used the term snapshot. They don't feel like snapshots, but I understand it's a millionth of a second. It does have that momentary yeah. Uh, yeah, grab almost. Yeah. But within it is clearly an awareness of composition, as you say, colour, that, that really comes through. The kind of bounce from that orange from purple to the yellow to the pink. There's a rhythm throughout, set against this kind of very grid-like structure that keeps me thinking of a painter like Sarah Morris, you know, how that kind of observation of banking culture is reduced to a grid and nothing more, where here you're looking at, here are the workers that support that, a part of that. Right. Or, you know, there's another kind of organic life. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so here we are. Where are we? Where are we here? Are we summer. We're getting summer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, awesome. JP Morgan Chase. The bank is opposite the other one. There's two two Chase buildings that are opposite yeah. one another. This one's still standing. Um, and we've got a you know we've got a delivery driver there who does an e-bike. Uh, we're on her phone. Some. Some people who you assume work in the office, you know, coming out and on the on the front of the uh, building there, having a chat, sometimes smoking a cigarette, random strangers, a um, can picker guy here, I'm attempting to use the word homeless, I don't necessarily know who he is, reading, reviewing the menu of the takeout, it's strange. Um, you know, people on the phone, uh, the flowers out for summer, delivery guys over there. Uh, but one thing to point out is, yes, these are thousandth of a second candid pictures from, you know, the other side of the street, but they are incredibly sharp. They're very, very highly detailed. Um, you can go right in, you can see there's no level where it cuts off into, into film grain. It's not film, it's digital, even or digital noise. You can make out individual hairs on people's heads if you wish to. So there's a, a, a determination to have absolute veracity to them in that way. Um, the colour isn't tweaked in any sense. I do, I do my I do my best to keep the technical quality up, yeah. but um, without getting too obsessed about it and that becoming the the all and end all. Of the world. And unlike Shimmer, is it true to say that you're not? directly engaging with any of these people. There isn't, I'm looking here like this guy, looks like he might have seen you. Yeah, I can't remember looking at me or he's looking at the guy with the, I, I, I can't yeah. remember looking at the guy with the men reading the menu. I can't remember which right. one is looking at the two of us. Uh, so it's a different position. Yeah. Or subject position. Yeah, it is a little bit more distant observing life. Yeah. It would be hard to have a dialogue with someone on the other side of the road, of yeah. course. But obviously, if I was working there for a couple of years, I got to know, I mean, I met a couple of friends. Oh, you did? Who worked in offices, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd bump into them at lunchtime. Yeah. You know, a few friends who worked in, who work in finance departments or compliance departments of banks. And um, I bumped, I'd bump into them, a couple of people I got to know. I got to know quite a few of the security staff pretty well, because they're wondering why this guy's taking pictures endlessly. So obviously, I'd yeah, get to I wonder about that. I'd get I mean, to know them. Yeah, they must be the most CCTV um, aware somewhere business of all, right? Somewhere, right? And then, yeah, then we moved across to to uh, yeah. I should have actually put this out. That was the, the spread of all uh, six of okay. the invite card, where you see the whole um, accordion. So this role. is the, the six. The six six images. photographs, yeah. six images. Yeah, as we did in the invite card. I think they're all gone now. I mean, but you, you can see the six there. It's an easier way to see them. Um, and this one was Bank of America. This is actually one of the first ones I got that I was very happy with. You know, which sequence they arrived at doesn't yeah. really matter. But I love this one with the uh, everyone's waiting on the. Uh, 
Bank of America, um, and uh, are they waiting for it to open? No, waiting for people to come. Okay, you know, uh, for friends. I think uh, either either just some people are smoking a cigarette, of course, checking their, calling their beloveds, you know, or their friends, you know, having, making phone calls, you know, in the, in the lunchtime window. Um, yeah. The, uh, all obsessed with cell phones. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, I love this arrangement. People dotted around, you know, from one side to the other. I took a lot of pictures there, you know, yeah. probably, probably a hundred images in the same situation. It's yeah. interesting that you said this is the first image. With this one, it feels like you're more amongst the group. There's something about that perspective. It is a slightly it's elevated, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, just standing on a slightly higher level. Right. So you feel more placed within it, mm -hmm. part of the community that's working the street. Right. That's a good observation, right? It's true, because all the others actually have a road between me and them. Yeah, you're, you're, you're separated, or it's like I'm not part of this. I'm, I'm observing this yeah. culture within yeah. there. This particular area all the others I'm on the other side of the road and this one I'm not on the other side of the road um, but although there is this wide uh, you know, uh, area between me and them yeah, but the people, people have their lunch breaks um, did you have any sense of the politic going in I probably already know the answer that you don't you, you're there you're observing you're looking to see certain things certain patterns within people perhaps was there a clear sense of something that you wanted from this particular community, this particular time, in this city, pre and post a recession? Or you were looking at, hey, these are the, um, you know, the tulip pickers of this time, or the stone breakers of Paul Bay's time, or? Um, no, I, don't, I didn't want to go, you know, to illustrate a dogmatic concept in that right. way. Uh, yeah. You know, um, yeah, uh, you, uh, photography is not like that. You can't, right. you can't force it, as we, we just discussed before, you can't force it to, well, when you do try and force it into neat, you know, neat little boxes to illustrate an idea you have or a concept, you have, it just it won't do that. It, right. it, it, it slaps you outside the face and says, no, I'm not right. operating with that. So you have to roll with it, this, this yeah. dance between you and life, you know, between the, 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 the artist, the photographer, yeah. and the world, is what's wonderful about the medium. Yeah. It's what's unique and special about it. And to some people that's not interesting. To other people yeah. it's the most profound and interesting thing they can be, as, a, as an art form, what, what's unique about it, yeah. in that way. So yeah, I roll with what I found and where I found it, how, I, how the light was then, um, and you have to work with it. And, and, find ways to bend it, it to your will and your will to it, right. you know. Yeah. Right. I like this idea of life if you use boxes, even when it's the camera's box that you, that it will show you something you didn't know. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Way. And you can often, you can walk out, I mean, if someone, it's interesting how you see an exhibition of photography and you can then go out into the world and you yeah. start seeing the world different. Right. You know. So someone who saw you know, Robert Frank or Gary Winogrand yeah. or Diane Arbus, you start looking yeah. at the world differently. And I imagine someone who sees this exhibition then goes off down to you know, happens to work on Park Avenue or is down on this bit of Midtown Park Avenue yeah. would suddenly start looking at it slightly differently yeah. in that way. I mean, well, here we are at the last image, here we are at winter in the seasons. Clearly, but, uh, clearly. big snowstorm. <laughs> there's, the, there's the giveaway there not digitally manipulated it is a snowstorm but when we first came back into the exhibit and we were talking about it and its place within a history of image making the first thing that we both noticed was hey nobody's wearing a mask almost immediately that flip in time of history and our literal present yeah how you know time yeah. has made one of its great tricks you know, yeah the world's made a great a great switch upon us, you know, switcheroo, yeah. and suddenly what looked like it was just a year ago is suddenly a whole other world ago, an, yeah. eon, an eon ago. Yes. 
where everybody wandered around freely and you know shook hands and embraced and yeah. didn't wear masks and didn't have and that's, yeah. uh, I mean this one isn't the most crowded one because obviously it was snowing and sure, it was cold sure. and people were trying to get out of it as yeah. quickly as they could um, Citibank another building has been renovated it's amazing how much in the short time many of these buildings have changed but uh, another building has been renovated yeah. um, but uh, uh, since I took it um, but yeah, it's no, and of course in in, uh, in, in Bruegel, this was the iconic um, Hunters in the Snow one. Right, the, uh, so. the, uh, oh, I don't have the Bruegel here. The Bruegel here. That was the one where the, the winter snow scene and the guy walking around with a dead rabbit, I believe, oh, was over, yeah. over her hair, over his, over his shirt. Yeah. I remember that from last school. Right. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I'm reminded, as, as, as we leave this series, are the frames themselves, which are a clear reference to painting. Yeah. They're not gilded, and I, I recall the conversation with Lauren yeah, around the not Dutch, doing that. Dutch but, ebonized, yeah. uh, Flemish ebonized uh, wood frames in this dark, they call it ebonized, and so obviously it's a dark, uh, dark carbon thing, and which is sort of appropriate to the period. Right. right. Yeah. They wouldn't have the border, they wouldn't no, have that, okay. but they would, I wanted the, you know, you'd be able to see right at the edge, but they would yeah. have the. Thing. So yeah, it's a, a very much a homage. The, the, the Bruegels, I saw them all when they were on in Vienna. They gathered the existing okay. four of the five together, the right. seasons. They were on in Vienna two right. years ago, and I went to see those. And uh, the, they're nearly all in these frames. Who knows if they're original, but that's nearly the frames they're nearly all in. So we decided to honor that in yeah. the book with these. these uh, they, do give, they do give the images a weight yeah. and give a clear reference to them. Painting and yes. yeah, which is the idea. That's which the is idea. It, yes, give them away, yes. give them present. Say, look, yes. I know this looks like a casual snapshot across yeah. the street, but yeah. look how much care we've taken in yes. printing it, yeah. in photographing it, in printing it, mm -hmm. in presenting it, in mounting it, in using a particular frame and the yeah. scale of it. I'm trying to say, it may look casual, it may look yes. random, but it isn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. life can be seen through these moments if you will just look at it. I'm treating it seriously, so please look at it with, yeah. with, with sincerity, you know? Do you feel, here's a bigger, broader question now, photography. Do you feel that's changed? I, I remember when I first moved to London in the mid, late 90s, and there was the photographer's gallery. And that's where photography was placed. And it wasn't, at that point, necessarily interspersed with painting, sculpture, um, it had its own rarefied space, and that was photography, and then there was this thing called visual art. And I noted over 30, 40 years since, that of course photography's in there with other visual art mediums and forms. Have you noted that over time from the late 70s, 80s through to now? Is there still a sense that you're fighting for the place of a certain kind of photography? Maybe I'm getting that a little bit as it's no, from our conversation. Yeah, that's broadly right, but yeah, yeah you know, I mean, yes, photography, photography has had this has been embraced by the art world. Yes, but it's obviously it's a very partial embrace. Yes. It's certain things that they get and they love, and other things they don't. And then at the same time, you know, I mean, some of it's photography's fault too, but it is right. much anywhere. I mean, it's, plenty of bad photography out there. Or photography that has a different motivation, put it that way. Right. So it's done for a different purpose. Um, and, but that's not unique to photography. There's bad no. films, there's bad painting, there's bad books, you know, yeah. there's yeah. lots yeah. of bad stuff, but yes. let's not get, let's not, no, no. let's not crush photography <laughs> for no reason. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's much better than it was, let's be positive. Yeah. It's yeah. much better than it was. That, there is good work in galleries. Yes. Okay. You can see it. There is also a very, what's unique to me is a, a wonderful um, forum of book publishing. You know, independent book publishing is happening in photography where people release the work. The book is mm -hmm. often the final artwork. Right. And people release that and it goes all over the world, a couple of thousand copies. Yeah. And good work is good work. And yes. People recognize that. Yeah. And you may not be represented by a major gallery, you may not be showing in FOMA, you may not be showing in your country's big museum yeah. but if a great book comes out yeah. people see it and they get it so there's that that's also unique to photography yeah okay which is why i too have 
as you, you had dropped this. in. I yes. put a lot of emphasis in yeah. publishing books and releasing the work that way. Yeah. yeah. And it feel, it's a silly thing to say, but of course the democracy, the printed mm -hmm. image. And I think for another generation, when I you know, go to PS1's Printed Matter exhibit, the number of photography books that are chief amongst the, the readings of the, of the digital awareness of another generation, and the very easy way that that generation has to describe their love of photography is very much different. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I always begin to wonder if in some ways the the fine crafted print, photographic print, which photography has been obsessed about for a hundred years, yeah. has now got, I wouldn't say it's not replaced by, but it's now got matched by the fine crafted book, yeah. the, the expression of the book. So that has risen dramatically from being a sort of catalog thing you had in the background yeah. as a takeaway to being one of the final expressions of your completed artwork. Yeah. And so the, the fine print has got matched, you know, cleared, balanced out by the fine book, which as you say is much more democratic, especially in these digital days, almost anyone can get a book out. Yeah. You know, yeah. a laptop computer and then one of those print of demand services. Yeah. You can you can do it. You can do Let's let's take a look at the second series. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Produced on Forty Second Street, fifteen years ago. Um, yeah. And same sort of thing. That was the connection between the two. They're both okay. they're both works on the streets of New York City. Right. They're both you know unposed, unstaged uh, images of people. Uh, in, 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 in this city where we are. Yeah. Um, this is, this is um, when I first come here and I met Aaron so I work on a very iconic street, 42nd Street. And I just started working there and trying to think, you know, just, I'm, in, I'm in sort of the great deference to the, some of the great photography of Frank and Callahan and sure. Gary Winogrand and yeah. people who, who work with life flowing at them in the streets of New York. Yeah. And, you know, I thought, well, do anything that they're, they're, those are the, the gods, yeah. but you know, I'll go out and I'll try to take the camera. And I started working at 42nd Street, um, so 15 years ago, so like that, it was around uh, 2005. Five. Five. Yeah. yeah, is that when you moved to New York? No, I've been in there just I've been, yeah, been around a year or two ago. Okay, yeah, and I was starting to work on the street and just photographing people. And I think I bought my first digital camera, so I was like testing it out and doing this, yeah. and just photographing people. Sun, the evening sunlight mostly, where we come down, you know, to put Manhattan Henge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you sun, look down the avenue, yeah, yeah. At a certain time it's directly at you. Yeah. And um, I was photographing people doing that. And I put the pictures away for a long time, I thought it wasn't working. And then I was looking at them and I realized that the most interesting ones were the ones that you would normally reject in any sort of commercial assignment. Oh, that person blinked, they got their eyes yeah. closed, they were sort of not, you know, they, that's, you put them next to it, they don't bother with that one. But actually those are the most interesting ones, where you end up with this whole view of, of people walking around the city in a sort of either sightless, which became the title of the work, or um, in a, a trance-like moment, as you mentioned before. You know, the moment of an epiphanous sort of listening to some music or a thought that has struck them and they of course a lot of it is also the sunlight is yeah. is, is blinding them a bit um, doing that so we put the pictures together i actually just made an edit of it just the ones of people blinking eyes closed reverie on the phone I'm, I'm sort of putting words with, uh, with uh, projecting an emotional situation on someone where I don't actually know what was going on there. Um, and uh, we randomly uh, we put them in these frameless ones. We talked about the, the, the 16th century Dutch type frames, and we put them absolutely modern plexiglass frames, uh, plexiglass mounts with no frame, I should say, really. Um, so that you end up with this line of people like a street, you know, going down there. Um, very noticeable that there's uh, uh, no smartphones anywhere. There's no iPhone. There's one. There's one flip phone there on the guy's yeah. arm, but that's 
you can tell they're older. Yeah, it's that. that's true. There's Everybody. Nobody who gone into lost in the uh, their email or their yeah. texting. Um, everybody's um, yeah, no no um, headset pieces or anything like that in their ears. Um, and then there's a sort of um, do they look dated to you? Do you do you think you, do you see them and you see them? That's an interesting that is question. Like two, almost two decades ago. No, I think there's something perennial around this. You know, the person with their eyes closed, lost in some kind of reverie, or occasionally when I was looking at it, look. You know, there's this kind of theologic, religious prayer, prayer-like moment, which is quite romantic. Static. Yeah, it's just a random moment. Yeah, it got quite ecstatic. You know, it had this Caravaggio's chiaroscuro. The light hits the face. Yeah. It's yeah. you know the angles of the light. Yeah, and they don't actually, in terms of what they're wearing, it doesn't date itself. I think you're right. Flip, yeah, the cell phone. There'd be more people with that. Everyone's here with the cell phone, or they have yeah. the, the you know, earbuds in. Yeah. Nobody does that. There's, there's, a couple, there's a guy with a you know with old style a couple of people with old style Walkmans. Oh yeah, so yeah, dis Discmans or Walkmans yeah, there yeah. probably. Yeah. This guy and that lady there. Um, but most people are not like that, you know. And, uh, nothing is wireless. Yeah. And is this like Times Square, Forty Second Street? Right From now? Times Square to Port Authority, most people okay. um, on Forty Second, which, which is you know. It's a very touristy street, although yeah. I, I, most people don't seem to be tourists, to be honest. I mean, I've heard about it there a lot over the years. Right. And mostly if you're, I'd say, because of the time of day, because I'm doing the late evening sunlight. Oh, uh, with that twilight, the, yeah, the magic hour or whatever it is. Yeah, so they're probably coming out of work. Most right. Of yeah. Uh, there's a bus strap there because he has this grey line. Um, Check it on. I, I don't think, that, I mean, I've, I've, a couple of them could be tourists, you know, but I don't think that's. Uh, and, and, you know, the full range of New York's multicultural, mm -hmm. you know, wonderful yeah, multicultural yeah. Uh, life here is, is on display and full of every, you know, Asian Americans, African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, white Americans, blonde, dark, everything, older, younger, yeah. male, female, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I didn't attempt to tick every box, but there's a sure. good, a good range. As there is in like in the streets of New York. Yeah, that's that is this city. Yeah, and were they? You say they were the, the things that would normally be rejected. Are you looking at an image and then cropping in, or these were? No, pretty this much is pretty much, much the same. Pretty, pretty much. I mean, there might be a couple that are tightened up, or something might come in at the side. But mostly, mostly it's not. It's uh, it's, a, it's an early digital camera as well. You know, earlier generation. That technology moves fast, you can't print them so big um, without them breaking up. Um, and what's the timeline normally when you think of a series? Like you're not there, as you're saying, with the seasons or with this, the idea comes to you over time. Is, is there normally a timeline for that? Is it six months, three to two years? Or? Isn't that a question for any artist or it is. writer? It's, or, you know, it's, it's true. Did, when did, do you find your writing? Did, did, did it take you, you know, three weeks to write this book or did it take you yeah. 30 years? Yeah, no, you just don't know. No. Three weeks, three years, three uh, yeah. 30 years. Um, I wondered within the craft of image, I, I've been around a lot of fashion oriented industries, and of course their season is very tight. So they have to think within these three months or these six months. But I guess the beauty is here is that dwelling time to then find what it is the world is telling you, you're, you're thinking through subconsciously perhaps. Yeah. Um, I mean, what did take a time was to realize that it was the ones that were the eyes closed. Right. The ones yeah. that was thinking, yeah. uh, no, second break. Thank, yeah. Thankfully, luckily, I didn't delete them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is very tempting to do in this digital age because there's so much. Yeah. You end up so overshooting with too much stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and um, yeah, that that take that took a while to, to recognise that that thing there. Um, and uh, to 
also somehow the courage to, as with the present, to realize, yeah, I'm not Gary Winogrand, and I'm not Lee Freelander, I'm not Dan Arbus, but you know, those are my heroes and gods yeah. of mine. But to, to have the courage to like, well, here's my little attempt, yeah. you know, to shoot something on the streets in New York. And yeah. I hope you, here's my modest offering, and I hope you'll find it of some interest. Yeah. You know, and that takes courage. It does take to courage. To do it. You know, I, mean, I don't want to overstate my thing, but you know, to, to, to put yourself on a pedestal and stick your head above the parapet, yeah. someone can take a pop shot at you. Yeah. You know, um, you know we, well, something we should probably should discuss here is, is in the current climate, also, you don't, it's quite frowned upon to take unstated pictures of strangers on yes. without yeah. permission. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, yeah, the, that is a, how do you feel about that? Well, look, I mean, the, 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 the phrase now is, um, you know, uh, no agency, you know, people right. know thing. But, you know, you're not really, I don't do anything to me. I don't wait till someone is, you know, could easily have someone stuffing a hot dog in their mouth here sure. or whatever. Like that. I don't yeah. try not to do it, or picking their nose or, yeah. you know, uh, yawning in a strange way. I always try and avoid that. I try and yeah. make, allow people their decency and integrity. I, yeah, at the same time, yeah, I'm aware that it is a, an imposition on, yeah. a, on a random stranger. Well, not an imposition, uh, you know, might be in a moment of embarrassment of finding themselves 15. I waited 15 years before showing these, right, right. partly for that reason, because there yeah. are so much in one individual in each one. Yeah. Um, but then, Dave, wouldn't it be a tragedy if all we ever had of life in yeah. any city, be it Tokyo, New York, where in London, was stage portraits of people agreeing to have yes. their picture done and tell me how you want my head my back. If that's all we are going to have from here on of yeah. life, of who we are, staged, controlled, yeah. you know, uh, pictures that are restricted to how much imagination the artist and the person had. Yeah. Um, then then we, yeah. That's, that's a tragic. You yeah. know, then you can have no, no pictures of anyone walking down the dinner. We, we need pictures of people, you know, yeah. just how, what life was like in Chicago, Mary Callahan, what it was like when, when Robert Frank was here walking through New York, or, when, or Winogrand when he was here, yeah. you know. We do need that work. We do. You know? Otherwise, I feel we'd just be left with advertising. Mm -hmm. We'd be left with the idea of the human. And it's very clear within your work, from that early work in the 80s, that I first saw that was shot in DHSS offices for Americans as Department of Health and Social Security. Unemployment. Unemployment offices yeah. that I've been sat in in the 90s. They're very respectfully aware of that community and that place and nobody's tricked within those images. And clearly there's an empathy, you know, throughout your work for the subject. In Shimo, it's palpable, that sense of relationship mm -hmm. to people there every day. And so I, I've never thought with these works there is that danger. And of course we're thinking about that at this time. And maybe that's the last question. I think we have five minutes left of our IG Live. I'm going to walk out into this space. Um, what, what are the now? What, what is it for a, a photographer of life who, as we all are, has been asked to uh, isolate, stay in the apartment or the big house up in the Hamptons, whichever one falls within? Um, is it possible to be creative? Is this a time of rethinking, of stasis? How are you as a photographer, as an artist, thinking about the now? It's a big question, as we're all thinking about it. Um, the throwaway answer is, my now is, is homeschooling, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep a five-year-old entertained and happy every day, each and every day, I without any, any <laughs> play dates or schooling going on. So, um, I... It's, it's hard. If you, if you go out there and you work with life and you work with random strangers, yeah. you know, with, yeah. with life as it comes at you, it's a particularly difficult time. Yes. Because, I mean, when we really shut down as a city, there was nothing you could do. Unless you just want to do, you know, the obvious, you know, 
it's necessary, but the press type pictures of, oh, look, here's a shut down city, or here's yeah. everybody's wearing a mask. Isn't yes. that interesting? You know, but that, that's a very one dimensional thing at the end of the day. You know, um, I, I, you know I, I've stood back right now, and I'll see how it, how it plays out. Um, in that, in that sense, you know, I don't want to suddenly flip to, I don't think I want to suddenly start to photographing vases of flowers in my apartment, and, you know, I don't think so, no. you know, but, uh, um, I've taken, I've stepped back for a while, and, you know, this exhibition was, is up, it went into suspended animation briefly while the, yeah. the virus ran through the city, um, I have to say though, you know, I'm, you know, I look at this and I look at New York, and, and I'm, it reminds me of New York. It mm -hmm. makes me see how life is, was, and will be again. Yes. And I'm kind of proud of the city. I'm proud yeah. of it all. You know, we yeah. got hit really, really hard, but worse than almost anyone, and we got through it. Everyone, everyone buckled down. I mean, the city yeah. really shut down for a long time, and we got we got out the other side, and we're down to like, you know zero deaths for the last three days, you know, only yeah. 500 people in a giant in New York State are in hospital right now from COVID. You know, we've really, you know, crushed this thing. Yeah. And, good, and if we keep that up, we're doing well. And I'm proud of the city and we ought to yeah. celebrate that, you know, and that way and this life will, this life can come back. And that life on 42nd Street, yeah. that can come back. We can have that again in time, yeah. you know. So I, uh, I want to, I hope, you know, we can acknowledge and honour that. Yeah. You know, that and maybe we, if it's not too pithy to say, that's what the purpose in part of some of these photographic works are, is to remind us of what's been and what, yeah. what's coming. But I hear, I keep thinking that about New York. Like, we're, we're toughing it out, and we did it. Um, yeah, so far. It, it's so it's just waiting yeah. to come back. So, yes. so yeah. yeah. Out. It hasn't gone away. It has We've got to keep it on. Yeah. Keep, on keep on top of it. But, it's yeah. our new neighbour, and things will look a little different. And maybe we'll all be wearing these a little bit more. Yeah. Um, thank you, Paul. That was great. That was great to return to these images and to be able to share them through another camera of sorts. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Gracia, thank you. for being our uh, camera director extraordinaire. <laughs> and. Um, Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you. Right. Keep safe. Keep safe.